it's time for the bell. How many options will you sell? Fire up your platform, get ready to enter. But first, let's get the mindset centered. Hey, hey, let's go. Uh, we're not here to gamble, we're here to trade. We follow the plan, that's how we get paid. Testing, trading, have success. Find what works for you and forget the rest. Stats and probabilities is what we're about. Time to dismiss greed and doubt. Focus on the process, not the money. And the profits will flow like honey. Power our live, let's start the show. Come on, trade hackers, get ready to go. Zero day options, time to make bank. Get locked and loaded, then be ready to plank. Hey! What's up, everyone? Welcome to Power Hour Live, Monday, October 16th. Hope everybody's doing well. Big bounce back today. S&P up 45, NASDAQ up 180, Russell up 28, Dow up 300. NASDAQ, the strongest of the, oh no, Russell, strongest of the bunch. Uh, volatility, big contraction, 10%. VIX is down 10% after being up as much as 20 plus percent on Friday. So I did a AM ratio, hit first profit target, got stopped out for profit on the second portion. I tried to do a Rick after it bounced. It started kind of consolidating around right here, around 40 minutes after the market opened. And then it kind of took off, didn't get filled. So I missed out on Rick. Anyone else take Rick? Depending on where he got in, I would assume it should have hit. No, Rick. And then um, once we got up to kind of uh, just a discretionary trade I took, once we pushed up basically to the top where we got up to the peak of October 10th and then October 12th, kind of that that price level, I, I sold some calls and took those off when we got that little flush. Then we got this bounce. I started playing around with my JSP back test that uh, for strong short squeeze up 1%. And I ended up playing around with it, looking at 0.7% to see what that was like. Looked pretty good. So I got in some JSPs as well, which I'm still in up, uh, up a few hundred on that. I need Price can get up to about 43.80. Those should hit. For power hour, though, we do have the short squeeze. So tranche one, I'll be doing two to one ratio. So I need to buy some longs. Looks like we should be five wide for tranche one. Looks like the 75, 70s. We'll see where we settle out here in the next minute or so. Put on a 1-3 DTE double calendar earlier. It's up a couple hundred. Uh, I'm also, after I get into tranche one, I'm also going to put on a 2-3 double calendar to uh, put some more longs on the uh, on Thursday when JP's talking. All right, so 75-70s. Seventy-five seventies for tranche one, two to one ratio. Trying to get filled at ten ninety. Filled at ten ninety.
Yeah, getting a little bounce right after I got in. There's my two, three reminder. So what I was saying there, <clears throat> oh, got filled on some JSPs at 50% on that little bounce. So we got Powell speaking on Thursday. So I put on a 1-3 to get some longs on that day. I'm going to put on a 2-3 as well. So bear with me for just a minute here. I have any overlapping strikes? This would be the thirty fives and the twenties. Okay. Four fifteens. Let's try this. Hmm. Yeah, sorry. I was just I'm trying to get filled on a two three double calendar here on a different monitor and my order's getting rejected for some reason i'm trying to figure out why spx bouncing Hmm. Well,
time. All right, I'm gonna have to figure it out later. So, something I'm doing something wrong, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna skip it. All right, back to Power Hour. Nice little push up helps the ratio. Also good for the JSPs. Focus, yes, need to focus. So I saw some some folks got stopped out on the uh, AM ratio. It looked like you had the 70 strike versus the 75. So that just, that little difference helped. But some others hit their profit targets as well. I got in within uh, 30 seconds of the bell. In fact, I got in and literally within two minutes, my uh, I was up like 13 or 1400 bucks, just got some quick contraction. And then on that, on that initial five minute bar, that big push up. And then on this little pullback, it kind of pumped, pumped the volatility back in. And I was only up like seven or 800, but quick, really quick contraction out of the gate. I got a, yeah, I was pretty fortunate. I got a good fill. Yeah, I use a trailing stop on AM ratios. Yep. Uh, Quanteo, I um, I'm doing a uh, two puts versus one call. Make sure you can check the uh, trade plans channel and you'll see all the, uh, all the links to the different strategies. SPX is over a half percent higher from the open. That's why I'm doing a two to one. Man, that uh, I if you if you guys caught the uh, weekly video update, I talked about this a little bit, but Friday was weird, right? Like, I mean, the S and P was down around a half percent. Dow was actually green, and yet VIX was up twenty percent. And so, as you guys, as I mentioned, and as you guys saw, I started I started just reducing risk, shedding shedding some positions that I thought uh, needed to be needed to be let go in anticipation of something. I thought something fishy is going on. It still might be, but now we got a big bounce back, big ball contraction. So who knows, but sometimes I very rarely ever do that. But Friday was one of those days where I was just like, something just doesn't smell right. And when something doesn't smell like smell right, I just feel like I need to reduce risk. I left enough on so that this vol contraction really helped some of those yeah, portfolio margin trades for sure. But it's very interesting.
So I got some more JSPs that'll come off at 250. They're currently trading at 320. Our time flies need a little push lower. Got the one here. It's got a double calendar adjustment, double diagonal. Uh, it's going to either need to sit here. I mean, any more push up, any more vol contraction, it's just going to take longer. If we get a little bit of a pullback tomorrow, might be able to start peeling off for some profit. And we've got the one with uh, the October 27 with the single calendar adjustment. Looks like we're pretty close to break even on that one. Again, <clears throat> could use a little pullback. And then we added a calendar adjustment to our Nov third one today. And that one's down a little bit. Pretty well centered though. Yeah, I've got a five seven, it's up a little bit. It was up more. <clears throat> I'll close that out at the end of the day tomorrow. Short strangles in MES and QQQ are liking this vol contraction. Oil still not contracting much. Dead centered, but a little bit down on that. I did put on a, uh, a long VIX call spread just as a hedge since we got this massive contraction. In case there's still something going on behind the scenes that we don't know about and we get a uh, reversal tomorrow, I just wanted to have a little bit of a hedge on. So I used a uh, long call VIX spread for that. My 5.7, I've got the 4255s, 4390s. SPX bouncing a little bit. I got in, let's see, I got into tranche one at 1090. So I need to reduce my stop once it gets to 655. And it's currently trading at 875. Yeah, my five seven. It was up a few hundred earlier today. It's it's basically to scratch. It's, it looks like it's up about ten or twenty bucks now. Getting some quick decay coming into this ratio for tranche one. Tranche two and three, I'll just do one to one.
Yeah, the uh, the yield curve inversion that's you know that's touted quite a bit as kind of a precursor to recessionary type situations, but it's a little bit more of a longer term approach than I was talking about. I was really just talking about how volatility exploded and yet nothing was really moving. But yeah, from a longer longer term perspective, I, I've done a lot of seen a lot of statistics around that yield curve inversion as well. Getting close to closing out some JSPs. Trading at 260. I'm looking for 250. Yeah, it was it was going inverted, uninverted, kind of bouncing back and forth for for a while. There's my JSPs. All right, so I still got four left. Or no, I still got two left. Got an order at 50 cents for those ones. Coming up on tranche number two. Buy some longs. Looks like it might be the 8075s, five wide again. I just do one to one for for tranche two and three. I only do the the ratio on tranche one. And SPX, let's see, we had a high of day of about 43.83. We're at 79 right now, so just a few points under the high of day. Might get a straddle. I haven't seen a straddle in tranche two for a while. I prefer never to see a straddle in tranche two. Give another minute. All right, might be back to five wide here. We need a little, just a little few ticks lower to get five wide. All right, tranche two is going to be five wide. Tranche two, five wide, trying to get 550. You waited a little bit, could be bounce, bounce between the 80s and 75s on the put side. I always got in. I always get in at two fourteen here. So yeah, looks like it's back to five wide. Tranche one is down to 770. I'm looking for 655. Tranche two, I got filled at 550. So I'm looking for 330 to reduce my stop on tranche two.
So my remaining puts are the 4375. So I need price to stay above 4375 for those. Just a couple of those left though. Yeah, we still got some time before uh, tranche three, so I would say it's going to be five wide. VIX obviously had a big contraction overnight and then, but man, when it was real on edge when you, we just had that little pullback here right after the first five minute bar. So like the 10 minute and the 15 minute bar when they turned red, boy, the VIX really popped up. It's just a little on edge. Started getting a little spiky on this little flush too. But then just continued to grind lower. Also put on a um, TGIF today. It's up uh, a couple hundred so far. Punch one still trading around 780. I need 655. A little bit of a pullback on that one. Here's a little pullback, getting back to center. Trunch one down to 720. Uh, can you explain the stop loss triggers on spreads? What's the difference of no bid? Well, so if, if it's, you know, it's trying to get a price on each, each leg. And if there's no, if there's no price on one of the legs, then that's why it sometimes won't trigger or you'll get really bad slippage. Um, well, it, it's going by the mark price if there is a price on that leg. I did not trade any futures today. Oh, 
Oh, I'm sorry. No, I did. I I tried to get short. Um, I tried to get once we started kind of pulling back and we bounced a little bit. I tried to get short right in here, and then get, I just had a short. I had a tight stop, so I got stopped out on that big push. So, but that's that's the only futures I did today. All right, a few minutes until tranche three. Looks like it's either the 85 or 80s. And then the 75s on the put side. Maybe the 85, 75s. Give it another minute or so. SPX still trying to push a little bit. Either going to be 10 wide low premium or five wide big premium. Give it about 20 more seconds. Looks like the. Looks like it might be 10 wide. Mm -hmm. It's right of a tweener. It's a tweener. All right, 85, 75s. Trying to get filled at 270. 270. Pretty low. But it is 10 wide. All right, so 4375 is the ultimate sweet spot. Tranche one is down to 720. Still looking for 655. Tranche two is at 440. I'm looking for 330. Need a little pullback for uh well for both tranche one and two to get our stops reduced.
JSPs are trading down to a buck 35, buck 45. I use a fixed stop on all three of my tranches. Tranche one and two, I do ratchet down, but they're all fixed. They're not, they're not trailing stops. Launch one got down to six ninety five. Just a little pullback. Crunch twos at four thirty. I need three thirty on that one. VIX down 11%, down to 1720. Okay. Popping up to a high on Friday of 20.78. And it's still pushing. About to get our first market on close imbalance. 337 million sell side. There you go. Come on down. Nice and easy. For six fifty five, and then I'll reduce my stop to three bucks. It's 
Launch two is trading at 405. I need 330 on that one. Six fifteen. There it was. All right. Reducing my stop on tranche one. And maybe tranche two as well. Let's see. Tranche two, I'm looking for 330. Not quite. Trunch two is currently trading at three ninety. I need three thirty. Trunch one, I reduce it to three. Yep. Three eighty, three seventy five, three seventy. That's the seventy five eighty strike, so getting close to center on that one. Three fifty five. I need a little bit more decay out of tranche two. Last Monday was my biggest one-day winner in Power Hour ever, and last week was my best one-week profit Power Hour ever. Tranche 2 still hanging around 365. Now we just gotta we gotta complete the trifecta and make it my best month ever. Got a couple weeks.
360. Need about 30 more cents out. Uh, Andrew K, if you, um, so if you look at it from a stop perspective, tranche one, two, and three are all about the same. As far as the, the risk goes, because we have a tighter stop. All right, getting down there. 340. Looking for 330 for tranche two. Got about 21 minutes till the bell. There's 340. 335, 330. All right, reducing my stop on tranche two. My win rate per day of the week? I don't know. And my trader sync is actually going to be a little off from that perspective because, well, I guess, I mean, the vast majority of the time the lungs expire, so they settle on the next day. So that's when it actually tracks it as when they settle. Um, oh, just overall? see you know there's there's been little tweaks and adjustments to how i trade power hour as well but um let's see The other thing is I used to uh I used to just combine all the tranches into and I just used to tag them as power hour so I treated it as one trade from a statistical standpoint. And then I moved to monitor tracking each tranche separately so let's see if I can at least give you a decent idea. So here is, so April was when I really started diligently trading it exactly like I planned. You know, that's when I started doing kind of one month at a time. I'm going to trade it this way with this size. 
all that good stuff. So here's April. So I had a 70% win rate in April and that was just by the day. So you can see it was tagged just as power hour. So that's all three tranches. And that, and what's, what's crazy about this is I, I did over 36,000 that month, had a 70% win rate. And, um, I was doing six contracts of tranche one, three contracts of tranche two, and one contract of tranche three. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And then, okay, so that's April. So that's a 70% win rate. If we look at May. Uh, 60% win rate in May. And again, that's just by day, all tranches together. And then June was 57%. And I was still tracking just all tranches together. Uh, July is when I, halfway through July is when I started splitting out the tranches. And you can see my win rate that month was 50, almost 54%. That was a, just a tiny bit of profit on the month that month. Getting a little down move in SPX. So that's uh so that's July August That was the down month 55% win rate and that's between all all the tranches September September only a 49% win rate, but still made over 29K that month. Pretty crazy. Um, yeah, Andrew K, I would, I would, uh, Landon and I had this conversation. I would, uh, yeah, I would consider spreading it out because. You'll, if you just kind of go through the back test, what you'll see is that, you know, sometimes tranche one will struggle for a while. Sometimes tranche two will struggle for a while and it, it, it kind of, you know, rotates, but so I would, I would say if I was you, I would probably, as you, as you start to increase your size, I would start to spread that between, between tranches. The September profit per tranche. So here's tranche one, which also includes, let's see, you know, there's just that one day that I had the uh, short squeeze. So the two to one ratio, which was a $9,000 winner that day. So 60% um, win rate on tranche one in September. Oh, wait. No, that was October. Okay, so uh, tranche two in September uh, was red, 42% win rate. And then tranche three for September was basically a scratch, 45% win rate.
All right, heaven, hovering just above our 4375 mark. 13 minutes to go. Yeah, I think it was August. Tranche one struggled. Yeah, so it just kind of just kind of depends. That's what that's that's what I like the idea of tranching. That way you're kind of spreading your spreading your entries, spreading your spreading your range a little bit. We could just hang out right about here. That would be beautiful. Tranche two is trading down to 280. Tranche one is trading down to 370. Tranche three is trading at two bucks. Uh, they were starting to get a little bit further away. And because my ratio for tranche one is bigger, you know, I'm doing eight by 16. Um, and I already had some puts that I sold that I was using on the, uh, on the put side. But my, you can see my calls were way down at way up at 44.35 and 44.55. So just to be safe, I went ahead and just bought some more longs. Ten minutes to go. First three indications of uh, market on close and balance: three thirty-seven million to the sell side. Final one is already out, but it'll pop up on my feed in about. 10 seconds. 660 million to the sell side. Dick K, you must be a paid subscriber. Oh, oh, the voice is okay. Well, it says my voice is delayed also. My voice is never enough, Dick K. My JSPs are at 43.75, so I need to stay a little above that.
trying to decide what, if anything, I want to take to the bell today. Tranche three is 10 wide, but my low strike is 4375. It's right there. Let's see where we end up here in a few minutes. Tranche one is 70 and 75, so it's five wide's a little a little iffy. I preferred to do it with something 10 wide. Uh, I did my JSPs right around 1 p.m. Central, and then I added a couple about 1.30-ish. So that little consolidation and that little dip right there. Trader Bianca out at 80%, and she's yelling at us for some reason. She really wanted to let us know that she was out at 80%. <laughs> All right, five and a half minutes to go. I'll try to get out of my JSPs at 75 cents. All right, tranche one, what do I want to do with you? Trading up to four bucks now. I'm going to try to get out of tranche one at 380. Build at 385 on tranche one. Tranche two is trading at a buck. Tranche three is trading at 50 cents. Tranche two, I'm going to try to get out at 75 cents. Launch three, I've got it 25 cents, currently trading at 30. I'll go ahead and lower that one to 10 cents. So we'll take trunch three to the bell.
Billing on tranche two at 75 cents. All right, tranche three, it's up to you to go to the bell. Are you going to snag my 10 cent order? Pretty well centered. So tranche one in at 1090, out at 75 cents. 10, 15. That's two in at 550. Oh, no, not at tranche one out at 385, sorry. Tranche one at 1090. 385. Tranche two and at 550 out at 75. So plus 5,640 on tranche one, plus 7,600 on tranche two. Tranche three, I got in at 270. So I'll make 3,640 on tranche three. Assuming it holds up, but it's coming down a little bit. Uh oh, spoke too soon. See, that's what happens when you spend your money before you got it. Need a little bounce. Need a bounce above 75. Mm, nasty red bar. Well,. Yikes. Not what I was looking for. And tranche three is going to be, oh, low markup on the close. <laughs> nice. Uh, so it looks like tranche three will be about a $1,700 winner. So... 5,640 plus 7,600 plus whatever that settles at, 1,700-ish. All three winners. I'll take it. Beautiful. All right, my friends. Uh, let's see. Live stream tomorrow. Tomorrow is the 17th. So Chad will be streaming in the morning, and then we'll be back here for Power Hour Live, as always. All right, all. Take care. Have a good night. Talk to you soon.